Hey guys, it's JP here with uh, my second hobby video for the Meta Breakers channel. Um, today we're going to be working on some fur textures, painting uh, one of the Hurricane Wind Chargers, the Kangaroos, from Lumineth. So, yeah, we're going to basically try and see if we can get an army ready gaming style fur texture going on with just the same thing we do every day, just loads of teeny tiny little scratches. Let's get into it. <laughs> This podcast is made possible by our patrons. Okay, so I primed this bad boy black, the scale's black, and did an initial base coat of more than brown. Also, I now realize for this video I recorded all the audio with my webcam microphone instead of my actual microphone, so apologies for the sound quality being a little bit worse. We sort of start here with the scrag brown as the first step towards building up a fur texture. Uh, you can sort of see I'm just dabbing more or less randomly at the at the model and um, because we're going to be using for the, these for gaming we're not going to be building up a fur texture straight from the get-go from this first coat because we need to be reasonably speedy um, so just with these dabbing marks you're going to get some sort of texture some sort of visual noise um, and later I think that just still helps to add to the illusion that it's fur especially when you're holding it at arm's length. Again this is going to be a bit more of a way to paint fur on, you know, I'm doing a unit of 10 of these kangaroos. Uh, I'll probably include uh, the full video of, you know, how long it took me to do all 10 um, once this is done. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're starting off with just sort of stippling on with a reasonably large brush, just this scrag brown. It's a little bit thin down with water, um, but we're only, only doing one coat of it, so we can get away with a fair bit here. really should have painted this before putting the guy on top so that I could reach that one bit of, the, of his neck without putting the paintbrush to the bow every time. So next, we're doing the same thing basically, but with Baylor Brown. Uh, I really love Baylor Brown, it's the color I use all the time. Uh, again, not worrying about the fur texture here, just sort of stippling all over. You know, you're going to end up leaving some of the orange showing through, just uh, due to the, the the nature of translucent paint and the stippling effect. Um, but again, not thinking too much about this. I mean, technically you're avoiding the deepest shadows, deepest recesses, stuff like that. Um, but again, we're trying to get there reasonably quickly, so it's just sort of stip, stip, stip all the way through. You can already see here, it's even already looking a little bit like fur, and that's just from two layers of randomly stiff along texture. You know, you could easily stop here. Maybe I should have stopped here. I'll see how I feel after doing all 10. Um, but yeah, you know, sort of just giving it any texture at all, combined with the context cues of the fact that it's a kangaroo shaped model, uh, will start selling the fur effect. Now you can see though, we're sort of getting into the small brush, mix of Baylor Brown and Yushapti Bone. Um, and we're starting to do the actual fur texturing. Again, you could do this pretty quickly. You know, I'm just, you know, not really thinking about it here. I'm just making little lines. Um, this was sort of a uh, competition piece or something like that. You know, you really want to think about the exact location of your, you know, the highlight layers of fur and the direction the fur is going. But again, we're just trying to sell this illusion from the tabletop distance. So just put little lines in, go fast. Have fun.
So when we're highlighting here, we can think of the kangaroo tail as sort of a cylinder. Um, and I've got a very high-tech demonstration coming in. So when you have the light falling on the cylinder, you're thinking about where to place the highlights. You don't sort of have to put them right on top. I sort of put them here at this sort of three quarters of the way up. And you know, you're starting from dark at the bottom and you're working up to your highlight. Again, with this, you don't need to super worry about the exact time of Taylor bounding your shafty bone you're using. You could, if you wanted to, you know, take more time on this, you could do multiple, uh, multiple sort of fur layers with increasing the amount of your shafty bone you mix in. The basic only thing you're worrying about is that it's visually distinct from your layer of pure Baylor brown, and it transitions you into what we're on now, which is, you know, really just using pure your shafty bone. Here I managed to move the model off camera, just doing more dots on the top of the tail. With these sort of final layers, I do think a little bit more about the placement, sort of trying to get them in the highlight areas. It's actually probably not even necessary. Um, I'm not sure how much even this last step improves the look of the miniature with the amount that I do it here. If I was doing this again, I might do it um, a little bit less, you know, cover a little bit less with this u shafty bone layer. And even after this, I actually mix in a little bit of um, brighter flesh color, you know, sort of to make it closer to a white um, for a little bit more contrast. And I think when you're doing it in this quick rough and ready way, that also maybe is a little bit too much. But uh, the important thing is just for you, you know, again, you're just working up through lighter colors of this sort of bone color, and you just stop and start where you think it looks good. You know, there's no, there's no magic to it. The more layers you put on, um, the furrier it's going to look, and the brighter you go, sort of the shinier the fur is going to look. You can see I've sort of abandoned that one little area at the back of the neck where I can't reach. Uh, I do end up going back and doing that off camera. I just can't quite reach it through, uh, through the bow for these little scratches. Good lesson in subtle assembly. Here I'm sort of, you know, just going back, still using the shafty bone, but just touching up areas that I specifically think, you know, I'm just looking and seeing like, oh, I think that could use a little bit more, more fur. Uh, we'll probably do a separate video on how highlighting works in general, um, but really you're just sort of doing the tops. You can now see, you know, I've mixed in a bit of what is effectively white into the shafty bone to get a sort of even higher highlight, but I think I apply this too broadly across the miniature for it to exactly work. 
you know, it pops a little bit more on the tabletop, maybe looks a little bit worse up close on the camera. Um, but I probably will go back at the end and touch it up a little bit more with the Baylor Brown level to just bring the contrast down a little bit. can see here again this little this last brightest layer has taken over a little bit it's sort of all you see it has sort of taken away a little bit from the transitions um so yeah i'm gonna go back in here with a little bit of baylor brown in a moment and just have some same thing some little lines that's sort of where i think it should be more shaded um just to get back to some of that sort of the breadth of of colors and you know sort of smoother transition So here we are back with the Baylor Brown. Just dialing it back a little bit with the highlight, uh, where I think it could be, you know, it could be a little bit darker. Well, you can see, looks pretty furry. Here's another side. I did off camera. Um, again, it's going to scale with how much work you put into it. I think I'll probably do a little bit less than this on most of the gaming minis. Um, but it still does look very from arm's length, so yeah, pretty pleased with it. This video is made possible by our patrons. If you want to know more about how to support us, click on the link to the right.